Well, church, it's good to be together in God's presence. And then I'm so grateful that, uh, that we can do this. You know, to be honest, this is, <laughs> this is, I think, maybe the third or, I don't know, maybe the fourth version of how we were going to do whatever we were going to do this weekend. I mean, it's been, I know we're all feeling that, right? We're all feeling that, uh, that sense of um, the challenge of, of the moment. But here we are. And we're in God's presence together on, on, a, on a very practical level. You know, just yesterday there was a clarification that came out about the order and who could do what. And they specified, you know, a church that needed to uh, have a small team together to do a live stream. And so we're honoring that in the way that we can and, and keeping our distance, but uh, maybe a little too much distance. How about James and Donovan? And why don't we just celebrate our worship ministry right now? I mean, come on, right? This is amazing to be able to experience God in all of our kitchens, living rooms, family rooms, bedrooms. <laughs> Some of you, you're in your pajamas. I know it. It's all right. It's all right. You know what? Uh, it's important, though, as we begin uh, to get into the message together, I just want to say uh, we're going to receive the offering right now. And I, I know that for, for some of us, our, our job has been, uh, it's been a little bit more difficult. We might not even be working right now, that kind of thing. And I don't want you to hear me saying, hey, let's receive the offering uh, in, in a negative way. There are many that aren't affected in terms of the job right now, and it is right and good for us to continue to honor the Lord our God, putting him first uh, with our offering. And so the way we can do that is we are going to just, you can open a new tab on your computer or your device or your phone and just go to mycenterpoint.tv and you can click give. And I, I really want to urge you to do that if you're able, if you're able, if God has uh, continued to bless you and, and then give as you're able because as a church, we want to be ready to continue to bring hope and bring salvation and bring the touch of God to the world around us. I have a, a sense that in the coming weeks, man, church, we're going to be needed. Like all of us are going to be needed. Every one of us, wherever we are, are going to be needed. But that also includes being able to continue to do what God's given us a mission to do, which is to love and lead people to a life-changing connection with Christ. So right now, why don't you uh, click on the give area. And while you're doing that, let's just take a moment and let's pray together over our offering. Uh, let's just consecrate it to the Lord. So for all of us, we're giving online, but we're also giving in God's presence. So pray with me. God, thank you for every ounce of provision that you've given us. And Lord, in every season, we say it's right, God, to honor you with the first fruits of what you've given us. And so today, God, we give with a glad heart and we honor you, Jesus. We're grateful for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, we commit our offering to you. Amen. Can I share a testimony with you? I, I'm just so blown away by little things, right? We met with leaders uh, online <laughs> earlier in the week, and I shared about, hey, you know what? It looks like there's been some serious uh, uh, dropping off in terms of the giving, and that, that's a difficult thing to, to deal with as a leader. It has all kinds of implications, right? And then the very next day, one brother in our church that was on that leadership online experience uh, texted to say, hey, I just brought my tithe to the church building and I put it in the mailbox. And he said, and I want you to know, it's a regular tithe, but a whole lot of extra because uh, we just want to honor God and make sure that the church stays strong and can do the mission. Like, man, I love that, that some of us have that kind of sense of God's leading in our lives. I'm grateful for it. Grateful for it. Okay, so we are, uh, we are going to uh, shift gears, and I want to share a message with you. And, you know, the truth is this is a difficult moment. It really is. Uh, there is a lot of challenge to it, challenge in our own spirit, challenge in the environment around us. But I want to remind you of something, that you have overcome more than you probably are even aware of. <laughs> I mean, actually, altogether, we have all overcome a whole lot of things. I mean, we really have. I mean, just think about this with me for a moment. We've overcome the Y2K days. We overcame 9-11. Uh, we overcame the dot-com bust. We overcame the Great Recession. I mean, real things that we've overcome. I mean, and, and to even go beyond that, we've really overcome some stuff. Like, we overcame 
We overcame the dress challenge, people. Do you know what I'm talking about? We overcame the dress challenge. We made it through that one. We also overcame Sai and Gangnam style. We made it through. We overcame that challenge. We also overcame the ice bucket challenge. Some of us lived to tell the tale. We also overcame Kim Kardashian breaking the internet. And some of you even tried to, you know? And we also overcame, uh, what does the fox say? What was that even about? But we overcame it. <laughs> we, we overcame cash me out the door girl I mean do you do you see what I'm talking about we've overcome so much <laughs> okay so I all right I, I'm just being silly because I think that uh, there's an there's an importance to be able to laugh even even in a time full of challenge to be able to say you know what's still true it's still true what Nehemiah said in Nehemiah 8 12 that the joy of the Lord is my strength and I'm going to find strength in that experience of joy that my God is able to bring me, even uh, laughing in a lighthearted way, even though there's real stuff to overcome. And on that note, we do have a crisis in front of us. We have a crisis in our economy. We have a crisis in our uh, health atmosphere. And these are very real. I don't want to make light of that. There is a real crisis. And I mean, the, the disease is very real. Uh, we see the uh, the, the curve kind of going up, and we all understand our challenge right now is to do what we can to flatten that curve. That's why we're, we're keeping the distance and limiting gatherings and all of that. Uh, the, the disease is real. We see the reports of it from other countries. And, and, and for some of us who are right now asking the question, do you even know anyone who has this disease? Listen, let's not say things now that maybe in a week or two we're going to regret, right? So, so instead, let's just acknowledge, okay, there is a, a real crisis and I'm not buying into the hysteria, but I'm not going to uh, play Pollyanna and put my head in the sand either. I'm going to acknowledge the difficulty of the moment. But I'm also going to recognize this, that that fear is as contagious as the disease. Yeah. Yes. And I'm not telling you to feel bad if you're afraid. Good. Good. In fact, I think it's important to be able to acknowledge, God, I feel afraid. <laughs> but to come to a place of resolve about that fear, That's great. which is to push through it, which is to say, God, even though I'm afraid, I'm going to come back to a place of trust in you and hope in you and joy in you, and I'm not going to let that disease of fear spread through me. Yes. And so you know what? In a moment like this, we need to, we need to maybe guard our hearts a little bit more than usual. And uh, you know, when someone sends you that, that one video that is declaring, that's it, this is the end of the world, don't even watch it. Like, this is, that's probably not going to help you, and it's not going to change your assignment from God anyway. To bring the light and hope and joy and love of God wherever you are, however you can. Right, so let's stay on mission together. Let's be the church. Let's rise up and be the church like never before. Right, let's be the people of God who continue to find strength and hope and love in him that can flow through us. All right, so I want you to get your scriptures open, and I'm going to ask you to turn to Isaiah chapter 35. So open up to Isaiah chapter 35, and as you turn to Isaiah 35, I want you to think about this. Isaiah, as one of the prophets in the Old Testament, spoke into a very dark situation. I mean, the truth is, some of the thickest books in the Bible, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Lamentation, some of the thickest sections of the whole entire Bible are all addressing difficulty and challenge and hardship. And to me, what this speaks of is that part of God's heart for us is to, is to uh, speak into the reality of the difficult things that we're dealing with. And so Isaiah is speaking in a particular moment in the history of God's people where the Israelites are, are getting carted off as captives by King Shalmaneser of Assyria. I mean, that's a bad day. It's awful, the circumstance that they're going through. And in the middle of that moment that's so dark, God's spirit comes upon Isaiah and brings the heart of God for the people of God through the prophet of God so that God's people can continue to enjoy their God. And so with that in mind, this is what we read in, in uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 35. It says in Isaiah 35, 1, even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring, spring crocuses. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The deserts will become 
as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. There the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of the Lord our God. With this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He's coming to save you. You know, we often ask ourselves the question, I wonder what God's will is. I want to know what God's will is in this moment. I want to know what God's will is for my life. And it's a wonderful question to ask. It's an important one to ask. But sometimes we kind of need to look at the obvious. And I'm going to look at the very obvious for just a moment. Because in the scripture that I just read, in the first couple of verses, I noticed God's will being spoken of yeah. five times. <laughs> Did you see it? I mean, this is what I read there in the scriptures. I read in Isaiah 35, 1, it said, even the wilderness and desert will, everyone say will. will. Even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will, say it, will, <laughs> will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. Yes, there will. there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The deserts Will, you're picking up. All right. The deserts will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. And there the Lord will, will display his glory, the splendor of our God. What I find here in this section of scripture is you have to imagine it. The Israelites are in, in this moment that it's the worst of times. It is the worst of times for God's people at this particular juncture. But nevertheless, the spirit of God prompts the prophet to say, there's something in the future that you need to keep your mind on. Yes, the present is full of problems, challenges, and difficulties, but I don't want you to stay only in this present moment forgetting that your God is the one who always declares from all eternity, behold, I make all things new. That instead, that we would focus not only on the challenge and problem of right now, but also on the future that we have an anticipation of because of an awareness of the faithfulness of our God. He will. Everyone say, he will. He will. This speaks to a resolve that I need to have inside of me, that you need to have inside of you if we're going to make it through this season. And the resolve is, is this. I resolve that I'm future-minded. I want you to just say it, I'm future-minded. Future if I stay only aware of the right now moment, I'm going to lose sight of the big picture. I'm going to lose sight of the end game. I'm going to lose sight of the ultimate victory that I have in my God. And so I need to live in this moment right here and now with this resolve. I'm future-minded. Say it again, I'm future-minded. In a, in a time like this, when our thoughts are running rampant, we need some resolve, some resolution, some declarations that we can just simply say to remind ourselves of who we really are. And I say it again, I'm future-minded. When I find myself vortexing around, what about this and what if that and I don't know about this, I want to say I'm going to snap to attention spiritually and say, I'm future-minded. I believe that this is a moment and it's temporary and this too shall pass and that I serve an eternal God who knows the end from the beginning and that has established his throne in heaven and he is not moved and I can cling to him and find in him solid rock. Okay, so I have that resolve inside of me. I'm resolved that I'm going to be future minded. You know, earlier this week I was, I was just sharing some, some silly lighthearted things on uh, Instagram because I... I don't know, I feel like it's important now, maybe more than ever, to let ourselves be a little silly uh, in, in a God-honoring way, but let's be silly sometimes, <laughs> let's laugh. It's still okay to laugh. And so I was, I, I was by myself, alone, social distancing, and I went to the, uh, to the donut shop, and, and I was uh, kind of doing a selfie video and saying, you know what, in times like these, sometimes in a moment like this, you just need to have a donut, right? And I was being silly. But a couple of uh, friends from Centerpoint Church were at home and looking at Instagram with their kids. And one family was, uh, the mom was watching the Instagram story that I shared, and her daughter was watching it too. And her daughter, Stella, said, look, mommy, it's Jesus' friend from church. And he said that we can have donuts. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I just, I love like the lightheartedness of, of a little girl that's going... This darkness isn't all there is. <laughs> we can still have donuts. And I just want to say, when I, when I have that resolve that I'm future-minded, 
I'm, I'm not only going to be uh, enshrouded by the shadows of the moment with its challenges. I'm also going to be looking ahead to the brightness of my God and the light and the glory of his coming. I'm going to keep that always in view. And, and I believe that there's good reason for you and I to believe this. If you really look at your life, if you look at what has happened in your life, you'll recognize that there have been moments of severe challenge and God has brought you through. And you're now living in the future that was your future 10 years ago when you were thinking about what would happen. And you've made it through because your God has carried you. He will carry you. He will carry you. Just say, he will carry me. me. Yeah, so I'm going to be future-minded. But let me continue reading there. In in verse 3, Isaiah 35, verse 3, it said, with this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. With, with this news. Everyone say, with this news. With this news. I like the New Living Translation because it includes that particular phrase, meaning all the stuff from verses 1 and 2 about what God will do, like that is what we're going to strengthen ourselves and others with. With this news that he, he's, a, he's a God who will do amazing things. Amen. That resolve to be future-minded. It's important in this moment that we would, in fact, choose uh, to, to take that news to heart and let it strengthen us. You know, this uh, past week I celebrated my birthday, and I'll have to say it was one of the most unique birthdays ever. I mean, it was the birthday where I got grounded by the governor, right? <laughs> like, I have to stay home, and, and uh, at least I'm with my family, people I love, and I also found that at least I had bacon in my refrigerator, right? So, I mean, that was, we purchased that, you know, a month ago. We didn't know how bad we were going to need it, but on my birthday, I just thought, you know what? It's my birthday. I'm eating bacon, and, and I cooked it up so good. I mean, I cooked it outside on the grill so that our quarantine quarters of the household wouldn't be filled with bacon smell, because I like eating it, not necessarily smelling like it, and, um, and there was like a whole tray of bacon, and, and I, I let my family each have a piece, but I just decided... This is my birthday. I'm eating it all. And I had like, you know, seven pieces of bacon. It's terrible. It's awful. But you know what? I'm I'm not the only one that did a little bit of comfort food eating. I know that I'm not the only one. But (laughs) it was great, man. It was so enjoyable to eat that bacon in that moment. But can I tell you, the day after, oh, God, I felt terrible. I felt so nasty inside, right? I made a choice in that one moment that really didn't do me so good the next day. And I just want to say, in this moment, let's not make choices that we're going to look back on and regret. Let's make the choice in this moment to lean into with this news, the news that we have a God who will yet reveal his splendor, his glory, his goodness, his love. He will yet do something to make even the desert spring to life, right? Let's make a choice that's based on who we know our God to be, and let's not be the weak Let's be the strong. I mean, it's okay that we are feeling some weakness, but let's choose to lean in and actually do what the scripture said. With this news, strengthen those who have tired hands. But that means you and I are going to need to be strengthened. And so let that sense of the future strengthen you. And then resolve number two. My resolve is this. I'm strength supplying. (laughs) That's my second resolve. I'm strength supplying. I'm strength supplying. And here's what I mean. I think that family, friends, and neighbors, and people all around us right now are in desperate need of strength. And I think that what I'm finding in the scriptures is that God is looking to you and me as his people to be those who would actually supply that strength into our communities and to do so based on an understanding of the faithfulness of our God. And we don't have to look very far. I mean, we can look into our own lives and our own biographies and see the faithfulness of God and what he's done for us, but we need to make that resolve to be those who are strength supplying for others in our community. Let me, let me keep reading. It said in verse 4, say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies and he's coming to save you. Okay, so I want to take that Seriously, it said, say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. I mean, the truth is we have, we have a difficult 
crisis unfolding in front of us. And it does naturally cause us to be afraid because of the uncertainty of it all. We don't know what's going to happen with our job. We don't know what's going to happen with our kids' education. We don't know what's going to happen with our physical health. We don't know what's going to happen with the economy at large. And all of those factors, and maybe others that I didn't even list, are naturally going to cause us to be afraid. But our God calls us to not set up camp in fear. But instead to to wrestle and grapple with that feeling of fear, but to defeat it ultimately. Because if we if we settle into the camp of fear, it's gonna mess us up. It's not gonna help us to do what we actually need to do, which is to rise up and thrive. And so I I wanted to ask you to embrace a, a certain idea for a moment, and that is this like I was listening to, listening to Donald Miller, he's the author of uh, Blue Like Jazz, and he talks about story a lot. And his idea was, you know, in this life, most of us choose either of four particular roles. We either choose the role of the victim or the villain or the hero or the guide. And especially in a time of crisis, we tend generally Uh, to jump into one of those four roles. Some of us uh, jump into the victim role. Oh, this is all just happening to me and I'm a victim of it. And we just sort of lie down and let the circumstance walk all over us. Or or some of us may even uh, unintentionally or intentionally opt for the villain role. And all of a sudden, out of our own selfishness and out of camping out in fear, we start, you know, doing things that are harmful to others. And you know what? I think it's obvious, but let's not be the victim or the villain. Let's just decide, I don't need to be the victim because the scriptures I read says that you are more than conquerors through Christ who loves you. That's still true. Even in the middle of a crisis, it's still true. You are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Your Lord, you are one who overcomes and rises up. It's, it's part of what God says about who you are in this moment. So you don't need to be the villain. And you don't need to be the, the sorry, the victim. You don't need to be the villain. You, you are actually called to be the hero or the guide. Here's what I mean by that. The hero is one who looks for what can be done and does it. The hero is the one who thinks about others and makes, makes a way to do something for the benefit of others. The hero is the one who thinks about, well, what's going to happen 90 days from now? What can I do now to make that as good as it can be? The hero is the one that makes a choice based on strength and hope and what is possible. And that's who you and I need to be, people who are operating out, out of who God has said we are, the hero. The, the guide, the guide is the one who thinks about other people and, and how I can bring comfort to others. The guide is the one who thinks about the problems others are experiencing and how we can give direction and be a resource and, and bring hope to others. This is a time for the heroes and the guides to rise up. And I'm declaring that over you, you are heroes and guides in the kingdom of God because you have the mind of Christ and you have the glory of God living within you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So rise up and be those who would actually have this resolve to say, I'm resolved that I'm faith-filled and flowing. I'm faith-filled and flowing. And just say it to yourself right now. I'm faith-filled and flowing. And when all of that fear starts to try to amplify its voice to you, you need to kind of snap to spiritual attention and say, I'm faith-filled and flowing. I'm faith-filled. I believe that God is the same. Jesus Christ, the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm filled with faith in what he will yet do. I'm resolved about this. I I was reading uh, this book by Thomas Blackwell, and he uh, writes and and expresses this little formula that I think is interesting. E plus R equals O. And that is event plus response equals outcome. I mean, it's a simple formula. It's kind of common sense. E plus R equals O. Event plus response equals outcome. So we've got an event that we have no control over in terms of the crisis in the economy or the crisis in the, uh, in, in the uh, pandemic. But we, we have a response that we do have control over. And if you do the math, E plus R equals O, you begin to recognize, well, I can't do anything about the E, but I can sure do something about the R. And I I want to to encourage you today to choose 
to let your response be the resolve that I just mentioned. Resolved. I'm faith-filled and flowing. I'm flowing with love for people. I'm flowing with hope about what can happen because of who God is. I'm flowing with the joy of the Lord. I'm flowing with peace that surpasses or transcends all understanding. I'm flowing with the light of God coming into me, displacing the darkness and flowing through me. I'm flowing with the word of God that is bringing life everywhere I go and speak it. I'm flowing with the power of God to see circumstances change. I'm faith-filled and flowing. When we were having a time of worship this morning and I was alone, uh, I was worshiping, but I was also listening to what I was hearing the Lord say. And I saw a picture and it was mighty Jesus. And I, I saw his feet and his feet and he was just stepping on top of waves one after the other. And he was walking right on top of the waves. And it was like he wanted me to catch a glimpse of him. And I think he wants all of us to catch a glimpse of him. He is the one who walks right on top of the storms. And let me remind you of who you are. You, believer, you are in Christ. You're in Christ. That means you're gathered up in the one who walks on top of the storm. I'm resolved. I'm faith-filled and flowing. Why don't you just say it one more time? I'm Resolve. Faith filled and flowing. Say it. Faith filled and flowing. That's right. Now let me let me get back to that scripture. Isaiah 35, verse 4. It said, Say it to those with feel, fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. For your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He's coming to save you. This is this is important for us to, to, to always keep in view. That fearful hearts are meant to be spoken to by faith-filled hearts. And the message is, don't be afraid. Don't stay in fear. Move to the place where you again with clarity can anticipate what God will do. He hasn't stopped loving you. He hasn't stopped having a plan for your life. He hasn't stopped having an ability to bring comfort to you. He hasn't stopped having a faithfulness in his character. His love hasn't quit on you. He, he is going to show up to you. Yes. And the scripture that many of us know, and we've rattled off probably, maybe have uh, seen it on a poster or put it on a plaque, maybe you even crocheted it, right? But God works all things together for the good, for those who know him, love him, are called according to his purposes in Romans 8. All things. And you know what? That includes things like what we're going through right now. I believe it's true. As bad as the circumstance may be for us, God is able to work all things together for good. There is an end game, and it's victory in Jesus. Come on, there's an end game and it's victory in Jesus. I just got to say it. That's the end that I'm moving towards, an end game and it's victory uh, in Jesus. And so I want, I want to call you to spiritual attention and, and ask you to take, take this to heart. Your God is coming to save you. And, and I don't know what form he's coming. I don't know what the exact method is going to be in this moment for his saving to come your way. But I know it's true. Yes. Your God is coming to save you. Yes. And so I want us to just acknowledge together that in the biggest picture, what matters more than anything is experiencing God coming to save us from our sin Amen. and from our hopelessness and our despair and our darkness. And for every one of us, there's an opportunity to know God coming to save us through Jesus Christ. And maybe you're listening to me right now and uh, maybe you don't know who Jesus really even is. He is the Son of God sent to be the Savior of the world. Every single one of us needs to experience the forgiveness of our sins and needs to experience being born again, like being made new from the inside. 
And in the big picture, God coming to save you looks like Jesus entering into time and space and taking upon himself all of the shame and guilt of your sin and mine and paying the price for it so that we would never owe for that, so that we could one day cry out, God, would you forgive my sin? And then he does because the price has been paid, justice has been satisfied, and there is an opportunity for you to experience God coming to save you. It's Jesus Christ. And right where you are, maybe this is the moment where once and for all, you need to wake up. I mean, spiritually, wake up. And you've been kind of on the outside looking in, thinking about this God thing or this church thing and wondering, but today I want to invite you to cross the line. And today, to experience God coming to save you. In Jesus Christ, this is available for you. In this moment, right here, right now, I want you to cry out and say, Jesus Christ, would you forgive my sin and save my life? Yeah. And, and would you just pray with me right now? Let's take a moment and let's pray together. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for your goodness, your power, and your love. And I pray that, Lord, for every one of us gathering in this moment online, Lord, that you would allow your peace to come your power to flow. Yes. And Lord, I'm praying that in this moment, Lord, for some of us, there would be a spiritual awakening that would take place. And, and as I'm praying, I'm praying in particular for you, if you've never actually crossed that line and said yes to Jesus, because you need to, today, here and now, it's your moment to finally say yes to Jesus. And so would you, in this moment, just simply join me and pray out loud right where you're sitting and just say, Jesus Christ, I give my life to you, Jesus Christ, I believe in you. Jesus, I'm asking you to forgive my sin and save my life. And if you've just prayed with me that way for the first time, would you just click online, if you're in our church online platform, that you're committing your life to Jesus. We want to make sure to help you grow in this new life in Jesus. If you're on our Facebook Live, then would you just mention in the comments, I'm giving my life to Jesus, because we really do want to come together with you so that this, this can be an opportunity to grow spiritually like never before. But let's take a moment and let's pray about some other things. Let's take a moment and pray over, over our economy. Let's take a moment and pray over the healthcare system. Let's take a moment and pray over our city and our cities and our country. And let's just take a moment and do what it says in 2 Chronicles 7, where it says, if my people who are called by name would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, right, that, that God would heal our land. So let's just take a moment and do that right now, could we? Let's pray. Everyone right where you are, come on, pray with me. God, I thank you for your word that you invite us to turn from our wicked ways and to turn to you. Thank you, Lord, that that is an option for us. Thank you, God, and we do it now. We turn from any wicked ways and we turn to you, Lord. And together, we say, God, would you forgive our sin? Even the ones we don't even know about, God, would you forgive our sin of unforgiveness? Would you forgive our sin of grudge holding? Would you forgive our sin of bitterness? God, would you forgive our sin of faithlessness? God, would you forgive our sin of not caring about other people the way we should? God, would you forgive our sin of slandering our leaders? God, would you forgive our sin of not putting you first in our lives? God, would you forgive our sin? Just take a moment right now and come on and cry out together. Just say it. God, would you forgive our sin? Lord, would you pour out your mercy on us. We're asking God that you'd pour out your mercy on us. Lord, forgive us for every way that we have walked away from you. God, forgive us for any way in which we have not done what you've called us to do. God, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. We're, we're repenting together. God, we ask for your mercy covering through Jesus Christ's shed blood. And now, God, we also want to pray for him people who are actually suffering with this uh, virus right now, God, we pray for miraculous recovery and healing. And Lord, we also pray for every one of our friends who's a doctor, who's a nurse, who's a technician in a hospital. God, we ask for your mercy covering. And forgive us, Lord, for where some of us, we don't actually see it happening in our own town quite yet. And so we, we almost have a, a flippant attitude. Forgive us, God. And now we ask, God, that you would protect every healthcare worker, 
And if any have uh, become infected with COVID-19, then we ask for miraculously fast recovery. Lord, we also pray for everybody who's in the sciences, who's uh, working to try to find a cure. Lord, I pray for supernatural insight. I, I pray, God, that there would be absolute supernatural insight that would be given to scientists and researchers and doctors right now who are trying to figure out what do we do? What's the vaccine? What's the best treatment protocol? God, I pray for an infusion from heaven of insight and strategy. God, I pray for some of my brothers and sisters right now who are losing work. For some, losing hours, others losing positions. Oh, God, have mercy. God, have mercy. And I'm praying, first and foremost, for calm in each heart. And God, I'm also asking for new ways to be opened up for how uh, income can be received, for new ways to be opened up for work. And then with one voice all together, we take authority as believers over the economy in our land. And, and we believe, God, that you can do all things. And so together with one voice, we take authority over the economy and we declare a protection in the name of Jesus for livelihoods. And we ask God for a miraculous intervention. I pray, God, for a release of new ideas for how work can be done and for how uh, productivity can still happen. And we pray together, God, that you would bring about a, a supernatural turnaround. Yes. We're going to ask for it till we see it. Yeah. And God, we also want to pray right now for our leaders. Yes, Again, God, we ask you to forgive us for where we have uh, been cynical or uh, unappreciative in any way. Uh, I repent on behalf of <laughs> talk show hosts across the land who... Uh, have made fun of our leaders, and I want to personally ask God that you would forgive us for that, and we'd lift up our president and vice president, yes. Donald Trump and Mike Pence and everyone else. We lift them up, God, and we ask God for your help for these guys. Yes. Help them, Lord, to stay strong and to lead well. God, bring supernatural wisdom to our leaders to be able to lead well in this moment. God, would you bring a breakthrough? And Lord, in this moment, we bring our hearts back to our trust in you, that there is an end game and it's a victory yes. in Jesus. So right now, God, I pray for a supernatural miracle to pl take place in each of our hearts, that we would be spiritually transported in, in this moment, right now, into a future moment where a sense of normalcy has resumed because I declare it will. Transport us for just a moment into, into a future time where people are healthy and people aren't you know, going crazy about grocery store items and stuff. Just transport us for a moment to a future moment where we're experiencing uh, good times because I believe you'll bring it. And now, right while, while you're, you're praying, just imagine being in that future time. And, and in that moment, would you just say, Jesus, thank you for the victory. Jesus, thank you for the victory that ultimately comes from you.